What you're seeing on the screen is my actual ECG signal being displayed and analyzed in real time using this device. And if you look at it closely, you can see the blue light flashing in coordination with my heart beating. In this video, I'm going to discuss how I made this device. It's based on an AD8232 breakout board, which amplifies the electrical signals coming from my heart. It then sends them to the computer through the microphone jack of my sound card. I'm going to show how I wrote custom software to analyze the signals coming in the sound card and do rudimentary heartbeat detection. Now before we go into the details of how this device was made, let's talk about what it is that ECG machines actually measure. When the heart contracts, its chambers and one-way valves help push blood around the body. The top chambers, called atria, squeeze to load the ventricles with blood. The ventricles are much stronger, and when they contract, one-way valves between the atria and ventricles slam shut, and the ventricles squeeze blood throughout the body. If you put your head up to someone's chest and you hear their heart beating as lub-dub, lub-dub, what you're actually hearing is those one-way valves slamming shut as the ventricles contract and relax. Different regions of the heart have to contract in the right sequence for the heart to function properly. This contraction is controlled by neurons. At a high level, the heart is generally controlled by the brain. Excitatory and inhibitory messages travel down nerves from the brain to the heart, but they don't actually tell the heart when to beat. Individual heartbeats are controlled by little clusters of neurons called ganglia, which live on the heart itself. The SA node and AV node are ganglia, which control the timing and strength of heartbeats in the atria and ventricles. These intrinsic cardiac ganglia have what it takes to beat the heart on their own. This is why if you remove the heart, it will continue to keep beating for a while. When the brain controls cardiac output, it does so by relaying messages to the intrinsic cardiac ganglia. The cardiac ganglia then send chemical signals to cardiomyocytes, the muscle cells in the heart, telling them when to contract. Contraction is achieved when cardiomyocytes open sodium and calcium channels, allowing positive ions to rush inside the cells. It's this flow of positive ions into muscle cells that produces the electrical signal we can measure with an electrocardiogram. The large spike you see on an ECG is the electrical activity associated with ventricular depolarization, and the little hump before it is when the atria depolarize. Now, electrocardiography is its own branch of medical science, but for the purposes of this video, we've described enough to be able to understand what it is we're looking at when we see an ECG signal. Let's go back to talking about the AD8232. Analog devices announced this chip in 2012, and it was really convenient because it was so simple, and it's very low power, but it's a little bit difficult to work with because it's so small. It has 20 pins, and it's only 4 millimeters by 4 millimeters. In the last few years, though, a lot of different companies have been making breakout boards for them, and in recent years, these breakout boards have become extremely inexpensive and easy to obtain. I don't remember exactly where I got mine, but I'm pretty sure it was an eBay item like this. Large quantities of disposable electrodes are also cheap on eBay. It's worth noting that similar devices can be found on Amazon and more officially on SparkFun, although you'll have to purchase the cable and pad separately for an additional fee. If you decide to make an ECG machine based on the AD8232, I recommend getting some high quality electrodes. Now mine came with a little plug here and snap electrodes, and these are really inexpensive online. You can get bags and bags of these electrodes. And let's take a closer look here. Focus. There we go. So that's what an electrode looks like. And you can pretty easily snap it like that. And it peels and it reveals a goop. Now that goop in the center is silver chloride gel. That makes a really good electrical connection with your body. So if you put this on your body, it's going to get a really high quality signal with low noise. So I recommend definitely get these. Don't skimp on the electrodes because your signal will be a lot noisier. This is the AD8232 breakout board. To get started, we need to supply power at 3.3 volts. I prefer using a linear voltage regulator hooked up to a 9 volt battery. And although this configuration isn't power efficient, it's simple and small and a good place to start. Definitely use a battery instead of a power supply because it is safer and it's usually lower noise too. The electrodes could be soldered directly to the board, but I prefer using the built-in audio jack. Let's take a moment to discuss where to place the electrodes. Now, electrode placement is actually pretty important because it affects the shape of the ECG signal. Now is a good time to note that technically this is a single lead ECG because it only measures the voltage between two electrodes, with the third electrode being ground. Therefore, this system is a three electrode single lead ECG system. Let's take a moment to talk about placement. 
Ideal placement looks like this, with electrodes typically labeled RA and LA for right arm and left arm, and LL for left leg. Although you can put these electrodes on your arms and legs, ideal position is on your chest forming a right triangle around your heart. Placement in different locations will change the shape of the ECG signal as different muscle groups are being measured. There are international standards which define ECG electrode color codes, but if you're going to get a cable from a mysterious vendor on the internet, you can't always rely that they're accurate. So it's probably worthwhile to use a continuity meter to beep out your connections and make sure you're connecting the right electrodes to the right part of your body. With the circuit powered up and the electrodes in the right spot on your body, you can use an oscilloscope to see the ECG signal coming right off the breakout board. To feed the signal into a computer using the sound card, use a socket or creative soldering to connect it to a stereo cable, and then plug the other end into the microphone jack of your computer's sound card. I prefer to short the left and right channels together, because I can't always be sure if the computer software is going to average the left and right channels together, or just draw data from the left channel. This may be all you need to get started visualizing your ECG with a computer, but in my case, I found that my PC sound card was too sensitive, and the output signal from the breakout board was too large. To reduce the size of the signal, you could use a resistor divider or a potentiometer. Okay, I've already put on two of the three. This is the third one. I'll peel off the backing, and I'm going to put it on my upper chest on the left side, kind of like right there, and we should see the signal start to stabilize. And there's the ECG coming through. This is the device all packaged up in a nice enclosure. Let's take a closer look and see what we have. On the front, there's a power LED, which also doubles to serve as the output of the ECG signal. We also have a uh, stereo connector here, but it's not to connect to the computer sound card. Instead, this is what I use to plug in the ECG chest electrodes to. So these wires go off to my chest. On the back, we've got a few things. We've got a barrel connector, which can be used to supply DC power. And in this example, I'm just using a 9 volt battery with a little barrel jack attached to it, so it's really convenient. Um, I'll just plug that in, and when I do, the light starts coming on solid in the front to indicate we have power. I also have an SMA connector where I output the voltage coming directly off of the chip. So this lets me access the actual voltage coming off the ECG amplifier, but oftentimes this is too strong and it can overwhelm the microphone jack of your sound card. So as a result, I added a voltage divider to bring the signal down to microphone audio levels, and that's what comes out of this. This is a 1 8 inch uh, female stereo adapter, and I can plug in a cable like this one that goes to the uh, microphone jack of my computer sound card, and we can analyze the signal that way. Uh, let's take a look on the front of this device, and I'll plug in my chest leads, and pretty much right away, you'll be able to see a heartbeat coming through. And again, the, the solid blue light indicates it has power, but this device has been modified so that it also fluctuates the light to indicate the heartbeats. So let's take a look inside and see how it works. Right now I've got it hooked up to my chest, which is why the blue light is flashing in coordination with my heartbeats. We can open it up and you'll see that I have a little more here than is necessary, but it adds a few features that I might find useful in the future. Uh, on the left, you can see the AD8232 breakout board, and it has its own little light that beats when my heart beats. Um, the connector has the hole drilled through, so I can easily access it from the front panel. And the only three connections going to the main board are ground, power, 3.3 volts, and then the output signal. Uh, let's quickly talk about the power chain. It's actually super basic. Um, on the right side of the board where the barrel connector is, power comes in here, and then it runs into this LD33V linear voltage regulator to bring it down to 3.3 volts. I added a 0.1 microfarad decoupling capacitor on the input and the output, and also a 10 microfarad uh, capacitor on the input and the output, just for good measure. Um, there's a little power indicator LED, uh, and yeah, and uh, <laughs> that's pretty, pretty much all we need for the power supply. Now, rather than take the output of this chip directly and send it right out the SMA connector, I decided to use an operational amplifier to help buffer the signal a bit. So this is an LM324 being powered from the 9 volts coming in here. It's not being powered from the 3.3 volts, um, but the output of the signal is going straight into 
one of the inputs, and it's configured in an inverting unity, unity gain configuration. So really, it's just acting as a voltage follower, and it's serving the purpose of a buffer in the circuit. Um, I use a bit of a voltage divider here to mix the output of that buffered signal in with the power supply voltage to supply a signal to my LED. That's what lets the LED be always on, uh, sort of glowing gently blue, but then to have large up and down fluctuations based on the heartbeat. Uh, the output goes to the SMA connector, and then from there it goes through a voltage divider to go to the stereo jack. Let's hook this up to the oscilloscope so we can see what the signal looks like. I'm going to ground it to the cage and then probe the output of the voltage follower buffer here, and we can take a look. I've seen some tutorials and videos out there demonstrating how to analyze the ECG from an AD8232 using a computer in a complicated chain of an ADC running on an Arduino, sending serial values over a USB with a USB to serial adapter, and it's kind of complicated, and although it works, I think that using the microphone jack is a really interesting idea because it's so simple. I mean, everybody has one and it requires no special hardware. Uh, so I wrote some Windows software specifically for this project to make it easy for anyone to visualize their ECG signal, and also to perform rudimentary heartbeat detection. Now this software is really easy to use, you just click it and it runs, and it's fully open source on GitHub, so anyone can have a go at improving it any way they like. Uh, you can find it by googling the phrase sound card ECG, all one word, or by using the link in the description. One of the things I wanted to mention is that it's been a while since I've shared a project online, and that's because I've undergone some pretty serious medical treatments recently. My last video about bit banging SPI devices with FTDI chips was supposed to be a two-part video, but shortly after I filmed part one, I got started with chemotherapy. And I actually tried to film part two while undergoing chemotherapy, but I was always too sick to actually get it done. Uh, since then, I've done radiation treatment, and pretty soon I'm going to be starting more chemotherapy. And if anyone's interested in following the progress of my medical treatments, I've set up a special website where anyone can check out the latest, and there's a link to that in the description. Uh, so with that being said, it's a little bit hard to predict when I'm going to share my next project. But I still have some pretty good ideas for future directions I'd like to go with this ECG circuit. You might have noticed that the output has a connector where I can get the unattenuated signal directly off the chip. And there's a good reason for that. It's because there are several ways that this project could go in the future to extend the functionality of the circuit. So let's run through a few of those. One of my future goals is to use a circuit to detect heart rate that doesn't involve a computer. And in order to design circuitry to detect heartbeats, I found it really convenient to actually make a circuit that generates heartbeats rather than having to hook up an ECG electrode every time I want to practice detecting my own heartbeats. So I did that here. This is a 555 uh, in a configuration that produces one square pulse about once a second, and it runs through a combination of resistors and a series capacitor to make it look somewhat like a QRS complex. Now that's centered around zero volts, so I used a LN324 quad op amp to add a standing DC voltage to that and then buffer the output signal in an inverting configuration. Because out of the 555, it is always high and then it just dips low very quickly and it ended up making it appear that the ECG signal was upside down. But anyway, now that it's inverted and buffered, I have, coming out of this wire, a signal that actually looks an awful lot like an ECG. So I can practice doing event detection or QRS detection. Uh, this is the circuit I came up with to do really rudimentary QRS detection. Uh, the output is here, and the core idea is that it turns this ECG signal, so this uh, light indicates the ECG, it's a standing voltage around 2 volts, and you can see the light fluctuating as the ECG occurs. This circuit detects this ECG signal and turns it into a square wave. The reason why I want to turn it into a square wave is because it's really easy to measure the period of square waves using, for example, a timer on a microcontroller. I'd much prefer to do that rather than use an analog to digital converter to do high speed measurements to measure the actual shape of an ECG signal and then try to do calculations on that. If I can make a little analog circuit that converts the ECG signal to a square wave, it's much easier to do heart rate detection. And potentially you could even do it all analog, or at least mostly analog, nothing fancy. Um, but having this synthetic circuit to generate an ECG signal was really convenient in testing out different designs for this. Uh, this method uses a fixed voltage detection, so anytime the voltage goes above 
the voltage set by this potentiometer. This light flashes as this capacitor decharges or discharges, and then a square wave is produced. But one of the ways this circuit could be improved is by using the equivalent of automatic gain control, where the voltage on the potentiometer always lowers until it starts detecting heartbeats, and then the heartbeats kind of keep it going. That way, even if the amplitude of heartbeats change, or the amplitude of the QRS complex changes, it can still automatically adapt to detect heartbeats and convert them into square pulses. So this is a really rudimentary first step, but indicates a lot of future directions that this project could go, especially for people who are just getting into electronics or want to have a practical application to practice designing analog circuits. When compared to some of the other ECG circuits I've made over the years, working with the AD8323 is one of the easiest ways to get started that I've experienced. So if you're new to the world of electronics or this is the first ECG machine you've built, definitely start with this chip and you'll have a pretty easy experience. If you build something cool, let me know about it. I'd love to see what you come up with. My email address is on my website. And if you're interested in this project and want to see more like it, you can see all of my projects on my website. And that's swharden.com.